So picking up right where we left off, we are reassembling this 3800. We are basically just doing a block swap on my Camaro engine. So this is a front wheel drive 3800, and we are gonna prep this and build it back up to work with a rear wheel drive for my Camaro. So you see the Camaro engine over there, got it off the subframe. We're gonna start picking parts off, throwing them on here, and we're just regasketing the entire engine here. So, step one, clean off all the old gasket stuff. So peel the head gaskets off, clean the intake valleys, clean the timing cover, get it clean, we can throw the glass gaskets on. So took the head gasket off, now I'm just taking a fresh razor blade, and we're gonna scrape all this material off, perpendicular with the surface, and just scrape it off. It's okay if it lands in here, we can vacuum it out. We don't really want it to land in the coolant jackets. And we're just gonna be doing this for quite a while. We gotta get all of this old material off and it looks like copper, so. This is gonna take a little bit, but gotta make sure we get it really clean for the new surface. Okay, razor blade, the entire head gasket surface, even the front timing cover, the intake valleys. So the block, as far as being prepped, is good to go. Now, let's just do a classic piston install. And there we go, a brand new piston. Just gotta do it six more times. So in a previous video, my front crank seal blew out on the track, leaked oil, and ended my track day, and ultimately ended up hurting that Camaro engine. What I'm gonna do is modify the timing cover. Now there's a little drain hole here, it's like a weep hole, that the seal sits in front of. So when oil splashes up to the seal, the seal catches it, and it's supposed to fall down into this weep hole and drip right into the oil pan. Now, if you see that little hole right there with the light shining through it, that is that hole I'm talking about. Since I have this off, I'm gonna take my drill and I'm gonna drill straight down to that hole and just enlarge this hole ever so slightly. I'm gonna go up um, almost twice the size that it currently is now and I'll let you know what drill bit I end up with but I'm just gonna look for the light that I can see shining through it right there drill straight and just increase this hole we can't go too deep and we can't go too wide otherwise we're gonna go into the the oil passages which would be bad just finished drilling and cleaning drilled it up to a 530 seconds and the hole was about a quarter inch, so we made some good progress. And I stick my pick through, we're still straight, no weird oblonging, we didn't eat into the cover or the seal part too much. I think it actually worked pretty good. I flip it over here, and you can see the end of my pick sticking out. So we're in business, this is good to go. Laying the gasket set out. This is a complete gasket set. So we should have everything we need. Comes with RTV. Actually came with two things of RTV. I was going to say, this is not a lot for a whole engine, but. So this looks like mostly the bottom half, uh, and then that might be the top half. There are the, the head gaskets are in that one under it. Came with valve stem seals. Um, uh, we're not going to be doing that, but. I'll keep them in case we want to do them in the future. Uh, this does say it's the supercharged uh, kit, but the kit I ordered was not labeled as a supercharged kit, so I'm hoping only this section is because this is the bottom half, which is the same gasket-wise between NA and supercharged. So let's just start opening this up, start putting it on. We're going to do the timing cover now, and then we'll flip it over and do the oil pan.
So I'm using this stuff as thread sealer, just adding a little bit on. And so I put thread sealer on these bottom four and I think the top one here needs it. I might as well just put it on all of them. It's not really gonna hurt anything. Um, but I know these ones need it for sure, the bottom four, because they came off with some sort of thread sealer on. I, this might even just be old Teflon tape, but something. So we're gonna put a little something back on. Applied some RTV behind the gasket. Really, really thin. It's more just acting as a glue. Now we're gonna put on the clean water pump. Water pump, timing cover, all torqued down, all good to go. Still gotta put the front seal in. We'll do that later. Now we're gonna work on the oil pan. So I flipped it this way so we can have much easier access to install it. So as you see, the timing cover meets up with the engine block. The gasket for the timing cover is a little long, so I'm gonna have to trim it with my razor blade. Same thing on the rear main seal. It meets up and butts up to where the oil pan gasket sits onto. Now this is the first step that changes since this is going into a rear drive car, a Camaro. We are using the oil pickup from the rear wheel drive oil pan, the Camaro. Hard to say, uh, bear with me. But this is the pickup from the Camaro. So I got a new gasket under it. Gonna put some blue Loctite on these and then torque it down a spec. This surface is prepped, so is the oil pan. We are ready to lay down our bead of RTV. Now the service bulletin says to lay down like a quarter inch thick bead. Uh, it's relatively thick, but we're just gonna do, um, you know, just a, a normal amount, nothing too crazy. And I'm switching back to my RTV gun here with my ultra black that is the RTV of choice for me. Get this out of here. There we go. And I'm just following the line of the old gasket material. You can still see it in the block, even though we cleaned everything. Really thin on the back main area. Blob it up in the corners. And back to normal. When we are underneath the car, what I did was rub my finger along to smooth it out and make sure I don't mess it up when I install the gasket. But with it upside down, um, it's pretty easy to just go fit it in and then line up the holes. Just gently on. making sure every hole is lined up. And that's about right, just like that. So I'm gonna give it a couple minutes, maybe one or two minutes for it to tack up more. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the top side and install the oil pan. A couple minutes later, ready to throw this on. Same thing, have a bead on the top. Just making sure the oil pan is free of 
dirt, debris stuff. I'm going to take a clean rag, one more wipe. Okay. Now we put the oil pan on. Okay, now let's throw our bolts in, and pro tip, start in the back. The back seems to be the one where the gasket doesn't exactly match 100%, like line up the back first, and then work your way towards the front. Just cleaned up the bottom side of the head, hit this one more time with brake clean, and then we're gonna lay the new gasket on, put this on, torque it down. Okay, so we got the head gasket here, on the back side, you see a more pronounced metal ring, and on the front, less pronounced. We also have arrows. I'm assuming the arrows face towards the front of the engine. If I line up here with the dowels, that seems to be correct. And then there's spots for the push rods to go through. Coolant jackets all match up. I believe that is how it goes. I'm going to double check with the other side first and then we'll throw the cylinder head on. Okay, so the arrow does go towards the front of the engine and the more pronounced metal on the bottom. Other than that, the gaskets are pretty identical but they're two different gaskets. There we go. Dowels are lined up. We're good to go. I got a set of new head bolts. They come with this sealant. I'm gonna put some extra sealant, but let me just get some bolts in there so now I can be sure that it's secure and not gonna go anywhere. All right. Again, I'm using this stuff. It's what I have. It seems to work. It's a decent amount. When you put it in there, it will spread itself out. And the last head bolt to tighten, the final torque spec of 120. There we go, a little over 120 degrees. So I did decide to go with the front wheel drive heads since the valve sum seals have been replaced at some point. They seemed to be in better shape than the Camaro heads and it, all around. It just it's, it was better shape, so it made more sense. And it works perfectly fine with the Camaro intake. I already tested that out. So head bolts, 37 foot-pounds, and then 120 degrees extra. And all the bolts got some sort of that sealant that I showed you. Next up, throwing on the lower intake manifold. Lower intake manifold is fully torqued. We're going to put down the upper intake manifold. No gasket sealer or anything, just gasket. Did not put new O-rings in the front. The kit did not come with it. These O-rings are actually in really good shape, surprisingly, so I think it will be okay. Let's plop down the upper intake. Now there's two dowels that we need to line up. We got the front one lined up. And there's the back. So there we go. Now it looks like a Camaro engine again. Okay, assembling the push rods and the rockers now. So I'm gonna use the push rods and rockers from the front wheel drive engine since they match the cam that is in here. That's the way I'm gonna go about it. I'm keeping them ordered, keeping them right side up and whatnot, so. And I'm gonna put a little dab of this. If you have like assembly oil, this is a zinc additive. I think it will be okay. It can't hurt anything, right? Okay, now we just make it fall in there. Just like that. 
Do that several more times. Okay, with all the push rods in, just gonna do a light dab. Setting down the tray, you could do it with the all the rockers on, but I don't want to risk dropping anything. Okay. I'm gonna grab a rocker. On this engine, it just has a torque spec. You don't lash the valves or anything like that. So I'm just gonna gently get it down, back it off a little, there we go, okay, now I'm going to make sure we're loose on all of them. And now we hit it with the torque spec. Starting off with 11 foot-pounds, I'm going to get everything close to it and then I'll tighten it down fully. Okay, now we're going to go 11 foot-pounds, starting this one. These are small bolts, don't over torque, done that before. It's really tight. Luckily, these are cast iron heads, not aluminum. Aluminum loves to strip out. And now that they're all torqued to 11 foot pounds, we're gonna turn it an extra 90 degrees. Now, I don't have an angle wrench for quarter inch drive or even a 3 8 drive. So we're going to go off of feel, so if anything we'll go a little under, but 90 is pretty simple to do. It's got a new valve cover gasket with the new black bolt gasket things. Sign it on up. I'm not putting any sealing on because really the valve cover is not under pressure and generally with good gaskets they'll seal pretty good. And then just a nice gentle tighten. Okay, torque these down, move to the other side. Well, as you can see, I have the new front wheel drive engine converted to rear wheel drive and assembled with the top half of the Camaro stuff, which I already showed putting that on. So it is all mounted up to the front subframe here. Now we just gotta keep doing the little stuff. Like I just put in the front seal. We're going to work on putting in the, the pulley, the crank pulley from the old engine onto here. We got alternator, power steering pump, any other accessories, wiring, transmission, clutch, flywheel. <laughs> We got a list, but let's knock it out. So before we put the fuel rails on, I wanted to change the injector O-rings. Now the gasket kit came with 16 of these O-rings. I'm guessing, I, I don't know. I don't know what they are because I looked it up and apparently these are for the lower O-ring, the O-ring I'm gonna replace on the fuel injectors. And they're, they're close, they're really close, but they are not exactly the same. You can tell these ones are a little bit wider. So we're gonna go with putting these ones on, dab them in some gasoline or motor oil, and then slide them on. Just pulled the old pulley off of the Camaro original engine. And take a look at the difference in the bolt lengths here for the crank bolts. 
So this is the Camaro one with the manual transmission. This is a front wheel drive 3800 or I believe um, the automatic Camaros had long bolts like this as well. I don't really know why. The pulleys are obviously different but I don't know. And I'm sure the supercharged version had an even longer bolt. It's kind of interesting. More progress. Got the power steering lines up. The power steering pump all hooked up. Alternator is on. Don't remember if that was there before. Uh, some things they don't tell you about doing a front wheel drive to rear wheel drive swap is the bolts for the power steering pump. You, they are studs and then they're nuts. So you have to transfer the stud over from the rear wheel drive car to the front wheel drive car. Rear wheel drive engine, but I swapped over everything from the front wheel drive. So this is the reverse. It has a stud here that you have to replace for the power steering pump long stud. And there's another long stud that you have to replace. And this is on the front wheel drive car. This is just a bolt. Behind this is a coolant passage. Same on the rear wheel drive for the long stud. Once you pull that stud out, coolant's gonna become pouring out as you can see. So definitely put some sort of Teflon tape or thread sealant when you install uh, and transfer over that stud. Quick rundown. We did swap over the sending unit from front wheel drive to rear wheel drive or vice versa, rear wheel drive to front wheel drive. Uh, because they are mounted in different locations, you have to do that in order for everything to clear, for it to clear the rack and whatnot. Now, last thing I really have to tackle besides the wiring harness is swapping the clutch to here. As you see, you can read it. I just did this clutch. We're going to run with it. Nothing's wrong with it. But we have to swap it over. We also have to put in a pilot bushing or a pilot bearing, whatever it's called onto the front wheel drive car since we're going to a manual. Uh, so I did order one of those ahead of time. It's already in the freezer shrinking. Now with the plastic cover installed we are ready to put the crank pulley on and the way I'm going to do it, which I mentioned this in uh, the video fixing the front oil leak, I'm just going to heat up the ring here, the hub, with a torch. Once it's nice and hot press it on by hand and then use the bolt to get it the rest of the way and it's so much easier than using the pulley installer tool. I still have the ground to the engine connected to the old Camaro engine. Gotta remove that. Let's not forget that. This is the main engine harness. Let's start piecing it on. And there's also another like positive section that goes from the battery to the starter. That we can worry about separately. Right now, let's get the main harness on. And as you see, we have a complete mess. Man, the wiring really just makes it all ugly and hard to follow and just not, not pretty. But in order to lay it out, now old wiring wants to lay the way it has been laying for years and years. So the easy way I found was just start with the fuel injectors because there's six of those and they're pretty distinct. You know, you got a, a harness there, harness there, connector, connector. So it's pretty easy to figure that one out first. Once you get the fuel injectors in, it just wants to lay the way it wants to lay. So it's really not all that bad. And the good thing is pretty much all the connectors are not interchangeable. So you don't have to worry about plugging something into the wrong spot. Now, I think that's about as far as I'm going to leave it. Tomorrow, we will lift the engine up once again, take the clutch off, put the clutch on, pilot bearing as well, and transmission in, starter, and keep going from there. Well, I managed to get the clutch and the flywheel off of the Camaro original engine. As you see here is the clutch. Definitely got some hot, hotter spots in it, and, you know, I did bring it on the track without really breaking it in and still learning on a track so I definitely dumped the clutch heated it up a little more than I should have but it's still okay um, all the bolts were still tight Loctite was still doing its job so that's good to know now it's just a matter of transferring over to that engine well I was gonna start putting the clutch on but I realized I never changed the rear main seal and 
I'm this deep, I might as well. There we go. So we really didn't mess up too much of the RTV on this, on the oil pan side. So I think we'll have no problem sealing that up. Here's the back of the cam. Okay, we just gotta clean this and then put our new seal on. And yeah, it's just that paper style seal. seal. So we got some work to do to clean this up. So here is the old seal. Here is the new seal. I haven't pressed it on yet. There's little stoppers or lips so it can't go too far. And you do it with the U-shape facing you. So this is the back side, this is the front away from the engine, just like that. We're gonna get something to press it down and then put the rest of the rear main cover on. So same thing, this rear main cover seal is slightly too long. So I gotta trim it just a little bit until we get it just right. Got the cover on fully torqued, oiled the seal beforehand. And as you can see, our TV squeezing out the bottom here. So we lined it up, then tightened it. Our TV's coming out. We're good to go. Now keep going with the clutch. Flywheel torqued. So is the clutch pressure plate. So we are ready to mate the transmission up. And back up, show you what I'm working with. Engine hoist here, lifting the back of the engine. Got a jack supporting the rear of the subframe. Shouldn't be too bad. Just put the engine here or the transmission here and slide it in. And there we have it. The old Camaro engine just left intake and up, gone. Oil pan, gone. And we have the front wheel drive engine converted to rear wheel drive with the Camaro accessories and intake. So getting that transmission on, it's a fight. And it shouldn't be a fight. So I wonder if my bell housing is a little bent. Because every time I've done this, the second time now, it's been, it's been a fight. But we got it in, and we have everything in place. Now, I could do the starter now, but I'm going to take advantage of the daylight I have now and just get this under the car and installed. But that will be in the next video, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.